Okay, so in this video lecture we're going to continue talking about pointers and we're going to look at various ways that we can compare pointers, the addresses, their addresses, and then the objects or the values to which they point. And this, you know, is going to come up a lot of times depending on whether you're manipulating the pointers or the objects they point to. So let's start off with some initial assignments and I'd encourage you to you know, type this in and get it working and change some of the values and play around. So I'm creating a pointer called IP0 and I'm going to assign it to point to null. And in terms of our diagram diagrammatic representation of what's happening in memory, that's what that looks like. Then I can define another IP1 and I'm going to make that point to an integer 5. And now IP2, I'm going to make it point to the same thing that IP1 points to. Now in terms of our diagram, we have something that looks like this. So I have two pointers. They're storing the same address, which means that they're pointing to the same object. Uh, there's only one copy of five even though I have two pointers pointing to it. And now let's declare IP3 and I'm going to create a new integer 10 for it. And so in terms of my diagram I get something that looks like So now let's look at various comparisons. One, one of the things that we're going to want to do is we're going to want to know if a pointer points to null or if it doesn't. So one comparison we can do is if IP0 is equal to null, and again we're using the constant or the literal 0 for null when we're using pointers, then we can conclude that IP0, uh, that the pointer points to null. We also want to check if it doesn't point to null. So if I have a comparison, if IP1 is not equal to null, then that means that IP1 points to something. We can also determine if two pointers point to the same object, and we can do that by comparing their values or comparing their addresses. So if IP1 is equal to IP2, that means that they hold the same address, so you can conclude that IP1 and IP2 point to the same thing. And we can also use the inequality operator to determine that IP1 and IP3 point to different objects. So these two addresses will be different. So IP1 and IP3 point to different objects. Now, now keep in mind that all of these comparisons we've done thus far 
have been using the addresses that the pointer stored. We are not actually um, doing any comparisons yet with the objects they point to, the values they point to. And so we're going to do that now. And in order, remember, in order to get the value or get the object that pointers point to, you have to dereference them. So if I dereference IP1, that is going to evaluate to 5. And then if I dereference IP2, that also is going to evaluate to 5 by virtue of the fact that they point to the same 5. And so I can conclude that these have the same value. And then, of course, I can use inequality, and I can say IP1 is not equal to dereferenced IP3. And just so I'm precise here, dereferenced IP1, which evaluates to 5, dereferenced IP3, which evaluates to 10, this will be true, so I can conclude that they are different values. And one final demonstration, what if I change this value 10 to 5? I can do that by dereferencing IP3. That gives me this integer, and then I can make an assignment as if it were a, a statically allocated variable. So now in doing that, 10 is now changed to 5 in that memory location. So these are two different fives, right? They're two physically different fives. They're stored in two different memory locations. And so I can write an if statement that tells me that, first of all, these are different addresses, which means that they're different objects, but they have the same value. So IP1 holds the address of this 5, IP3 holds the address of this 5. When I dereference them, I get 5, and this equality will be true. So I can conclude that they are different objects. But they're the same values.